Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson. In today's video, we're gonna talk about keeping a powder blue tang. Now, I've seen a lot of videos where people just kind of put the specs out on the fish and tell you about it. Well, I really wanna get in depth as to what it's been like to keep my powder blue tang that you see swimming around in this 210 gallon reef tank. Powder blue tangs are notorious for being difficult fish to keep. They really don't adapt well to captivity. I know of a lot of people who have bought these fish only to have them die in quarantine or early on. So know that if you're buying a powder blue tang, if it's not accustomed to the aquarium environment, it can be a difficult fish. When I bought my powder blue tang, it was covered in ick. And I bought it knowing it had ick. I got it at a very reduced rate because it had ick. The owner had tried many of the alternative methods like ginger to cure ick and it just didn't work. It's not gonna work. So I bought the fish knowing that it was a risk. I got it at a very reduced rate, brought it home, put it in quarantine, treated it with cupramine, got rid of the ick, fed the fish, got it healthy, got it happy, and was able to take this very sad, ugly powder blue tank and bring it around to something that was absolutely beautiful and ready for my reef tank. Ick and marine velvet are major problems for powder blue tanks, and I 100% recommend quarantine for these fish. I personally would never buy one and put it directly into my reef tank. First, I risk introducing ick or marine velvet into my reef tank. Second, these fish are ick magnets. If there is any ick, they're gonna get it, and you can't treat ick in a reef tank. So for me, quarantining is a must if you want to buy a powder blue tang. So once you get your fish through quarantine, it's time to introduce it into your tank. Now here is where you can run into other problems. These fish can be super aggressive to other tangs. So the powder blue tang is of the genus Acanthurius, and I probably mangled the Latin name, but the genus is important because if you have other fish of the same genus, like a powder brown or an Achilles or an orange shoulder tang, there is a high likelihood that these fish will fight. Now powder blues are notorious fighters and I have the same problem in my tank. My powder blue is an absolute bully. He's probably the second smallest tang in my tank and yet he constantly spars with the one of the biggest tangs in my tank, the Desert Dini. The Desert Dini is a big, beautiful, peaceful fish, and the powder blue will pick on him. Fortunately, in my case, the battles seem to be more sparring and dominance based. There's never any injury. Stress levels seem minimal, but one thing to keep in mind is that if you're looking for that peaceful tank, the powder blue is not likely to be the peaceful fish that you want. And if you have other tangs in your tank, it's likely to battle them. Also, whenever I introduce a new fish, I can rely on the powder blue to go up to it, beat on it, and establish its dominance. This isn't just tangs, this is anything. Like the triggers, wrasses, it doesn't matter. It goes up to the fish, it beats on it, and it shows it its dominance. It's never actually hurt a fish by doing that, but it totally makes sure that every fish knows it's king of the tank. Once established, I would say the powder blue tang is a really hardy fish. It's gonna do well in your aquarium. The main thing to worry about is ick and marine velvet. Don't put any fish in without quarantining. Make sure you put it with good tank mix and you're likely to be super successful with a powder blue tang. For feeding, I recommend nori or seaweed, whatever you like to call it. Some good hardy pellets. I like New Life Spectrum, but there are so many on the market that are also good. And a good frozen food. I personally use the LRS frozen food. It has a great mix of different 
fish and clams and all kinds of good stuff in there that it provides a really well-rounded diet. All tangs, including powder blues, are susceptible to hole in head and lateral line disease. And it is theorized that a good diet is one way to help prevent hole in head and lateral line disease with your powder blue tang. I have constantly fed this diet for years, never had a problem with hole in head or lateral line, so maybe I'm lucky or maybe the diet is actually working for me. As far as tank size goes, I really recommend a six foot tank or bigger. If you got a 90 gallon or a 120, one of the bigger four foot tanks, you can be successful with one of the smaller powder blues for a long time. But this fish really likes to swim and will get relatively big, about nine inches. So these guys want a big tank, lots of swimming room, and they will spend the entire day going back and forth across the tank. They are gonna add a lot of life and a lot of color to your reef tank, but they need that big tank to make it work. Water quality, we're really shooting for normal saltwater parameters. So you want 76 to 80 degrees, you want low nitrates, lower phosphates, they don't have to be extremely low, but you're really just looking for a good, stable saltwater environment to keep this fish in. Really, once it's established, this is going to be a fairly hardy fish for you, but it's going to want a big tank and lots of swimming room. So in my opinion, this fish is difficult to get used to the aquarium environment. It's an ick magnet. It's a bully. So why does anybody want one? Well, look at it. It's absolutely exquisite. So should you buy one? The answer is yes, if you're willing to put the time and the effort and the love that it takes to be successful with this fish. You've really got to plan on the fish that you're going to keep with it. Are you going to keep other tangs with it? How are you going to handle the, aggr the aggression? This is all important stuff to think about before you buy it. Can you quarantine the fish? If the answer is no, I would recommend buying a different fish. This fish is an ick magnet. It needs quarantine. It needs treated for ick and marine velvet. And I really suggest if you can't quarantine it, don't buy it. But if you're willing to put the time and the effort that it takes to be successful with the powder blue tank, it will be one of the centerpieces of your tank. They are so beautiful. They swim so gorgeously that I highly recommend it if you're willing to do the work. Thank you for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.